Good evening! It's Friday again! My name's Danny, says it right down there at the bottom of the screen. This is Easy 8's Online Painting Club. That's a bit of a mouthful today for some reason. Hope you guys have all been well. There is quite a chat going on over there in the live chat. I've been watching you since the beginning. I don't come on till 7, mate. Um, although my watch is about two and a half, maybe three minutes faster than what it says on the PC. So I don't know which one to believe. They should all be the same, right? Right? That's what it should be. So I wait till it come up to 7 o'clock there, like I do every week. Um, but nice to see that we've got a really full um, chat going on. We're up to 80 subscribers as well. It was up, then it was down, then it was up, then down, and it stayed at 80. We're at 80 subscribers. Thank you so much to everybody who has been sharing the word of easy 8 and to those of you that have been pushing the subscribe button it really makes me feel really good about myself um, and helps this community grow into something really special so thank you very much um episode 107 um this week i am going to be hopefully finishing um one of my two uh, hive guard from the tyranids um army from warhammer 40,000. i've been working on one of them because i thought two would be all right but apparently no <laughs> so i've been working on one of them for a little while a little bit longer than what I want now um, but I think I'm almost finished there's gonna be a few bits and pieces that I don't think I'm gonna be able to get done until sort of tomorrow and Sunday which I'm gonna have time for I've actually made some time for it um, to finish things like the base because I know you know from from previous shows that doing the bases I kind of try to get it all done but like cracking medium and things like that they take ages to the dry so um, trying to do that tonight is probably a bit unrealistic however there's a few details on Frank that um, I'm quite confident we're gonna get done today um, um, I'm looking at exploring something that I came across accidentally after last week's show. So after last week, we went over to the Discord um, for the Easy 8 after party. Um, and while I was sat there, I was just kind of chatting to Kez, really. Hi, Kez. Um, just about various things. And then I kind of stumbled across this um, little paint scheme that I kind of came up with. Now, if you remember back to last week's episode, I was talking about painting uh, like jellyfish style ten tentacles. Uh, what I wanted to achieve was that sort of bioelectric, um, but um, it had to have luminosity. So it had to have like a light the the impression of a light glow but i also kind of want to get across that sort of transparency i suppose um and i accidentally came across uh, a bit of a method that i'm gonna have a go at today i'm not expecting to perfect it but what i did last week by, by just kind of playing around with some colors um i got pretty close and then i pushed it too far in in exploring that so what i've done is i've kind of gone back to basics i put white ink all over what i've done already and um hopefully it should come out really good that's that's the plan Anyway, if you're working on something this evening, that's what this show is all about, so do let me know. This is a painting club. It's not a tutorial by any stretch of the imagination. There's loads of that stuff already out there. If you are painting something this evening, tell us all about it. Come on over here and talk to these guys in the live chat, because there's quite a few in the chatty bunch today. Or if you're watching it retrospectively, or you just don't want to talk in the live chat, down there in the comments. You can also find us over at Facebook and Instagram, and like I said earlier, at the end of the show, we'll be over at Discord on the Easy 8 After Party. All of the links to all of those platforms are just down there in the description of this video go and have a little look there's also a load of um, links to various people businesses etc who are just really worthy folk and you should definitely go and check them out uh, that list excuse me that list has recently grown because i went away to um oh there it is again i had my dinner recently i'm so sorry uh, i went away to the plymouth uh, Association of War Gamers event, uh, which we call colloquially Pauls, um, with some of the Easy 8 community, and it was a really, really good day. I had a cracking time. I uh, came back with quite a haul, and I met loads of really cool traders. And I'm going to talk more about um, uh, some of the traders a little bit later on, following in from last week, um, uh, in the second half of the show later on. So for the next two hours, I will be here with you painting my stuff. You can paint your stuff and get chatting and painting, I suppose. Let's turn all of your grey plastic hordes into something beautiful or at least painted yeah everything's beautiful it's all about perspective anyway <clears throat> i'm gonna move on over oh dear it is coming up in my throat today isn't it we got michael robinson hi folks i'm new hi michael thanks for coming along it said every now and again we get like a new person has joined the crew thanks for coming along mate and thanks for saying hi um i hope you really enjoy it here at easy eight it's not for everybody but if you've got stuff to paint uh this is the place that you want to be because um i'm rubbish and you might get motivated by the fact that someone live right now is struggling uh, because I do that a lot. If you want to show photos of your stuff, you can head on over to Facebook, you can head on over to um, Instagram, although you can't put your photos on Instagram, so I don't know why I'm saying that. Discord is the other place. Discord up there. Um, I say all the links are just down there, so if you want to put photos up, please do. Um, every week on Facebook, I put up a little schedule basically giving you a link to this week's show. 
that's where you can put your photographs for some reason the mentions tab doesn't work anymore i don't know why it just doesn't so um, if you want to take photos of whatever it is that you're working i'm genuinely genuinely interested in what it is that you're painting i love seeing pictures of what people are doing um i've seen some pictures of like the big surprise the big secret project that jeff's working on that's cool that's really really cool uh, and all the mechs that kez has been working on recently is absolutely fantastic so get painting take some photos and put them over on facebook so everybody else can see or discord you can put loads of stuff up there as well uh oh some comments going already so staff says not painting surprise surprise building some more houses for water tanker yeah i've almost finished my massive box of houses uh i've got like a little town coming on now but it takes forever doesn't it they're so small and fiddly um michael says stafford you may recognize me look at that bring a friend why not um have you fixed your airplanes yet yeah staff bought a load of airplanes a little while ago dave's joined us hi dave thanks for coming along yeah i know jeff don't worry i'm not going to talk about it it's fine it's just a big secret how did you get on with all the fences there's so much to talk about do you know what let's just get out of here before we go please share like and subscribe everything that you do uh, makes the community grow and like we're seeing now more people are joining every week and it would just really make my heart glow if you just talked about it and just kind of said it to someone hey man come along join join this it's it'll be cool um yeah I'm, I'm just blown away by how busy the live chat is last week there's just a couple of people having it have a chin wag here and there but whatever here we go wow we so here's here's frank i got frank and i got betty just over there named by the community um so yes i've had a busy week at work as often seems to be the case at the moment uh, not necessarily just busy at work i just had a lot of other projects on the go um so i haven't done anything this week so what i've done is these big strandy things that are coming off the gun down here strandy things whatever you want to call them they just need painting and I did a really good job on them last week when I was talking to Kez at the end of the show on Discord. And yeah, like I said, I just went a bit too far because I was pushing, I was exploring. And um, yeah, got to kind of go back. So I've just spent the last sort of 20 minutes just kind of neating it up, kind of getting the white ink on there. Um, and then I had to go for my dinner because my partner's very lovely. I get home from work about sort of 5, 5.30. She makes me dinner so I can come up here, um, which is which is really nice of her, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, it really is. She really supports the easy um, thing. It's really good of her. Um, so I came up here and I just put some white ink over it. So just to kind of go back a little bit, it doesn't matter. You can see that it's quite um, translucent and the, the colour still showing through. That doesn't really matter. What I'm going to do in a minute is I'm going to make a blue wash um and then i'm gonna let that dry and then i've got a couple of other washes and this is just by accident i found this so i've got drutchy violet um which is a horrible horrible color um and i've also got um no one i hope i pronounced this right you can work it out for yourself celia celia coelia <laughs> green shade um i got this for doing some grim dark stuff for doing um cold temperature and hot temperature stuff that's a whole separate story but um i've not really used it for anything other than playing around with grim dark stuff it's a beautiful color and i use it um i used it a little bit last week and you'll see what it does in a second and it also has this ever so slightly pearle pearlescent is that the right word pearlescent quality um which really just tipped the balance for um for making a decision on these tendricles tendricles i don't know if tendricles is the real world word but last week when we were talking about the tentacles on a um on a jellyfish tendricles was what i think we agreed on is um is is the name of the tentacly bits that stick out the bottom of jellyfish tendricles one more time for you tendricles um so we got more chats going on in here uh we got um <laughs> I'm just going to go back and have a little read through because I do like to read what you guys are all writing in here. Michael says, sorry, Michael, do you prefer Michael or Mike or M? I don't know. You tell me, whichever you prefer. Okay, I'll try and get a photo on Discord. I am painting some Reaper minis to act as NPCs for Frostgrave. Ooh, Frostgrave, is that an offshoot of d and is that, is that correct or am I barking up the wrong tree? Interesting, looking forward to seeing him. Rob Goodyear Polymath Workshop. Hello everyone, I'm Rob. I've been here a few times but pretty much new. Working on Necromunda Ash Waste, no Ash Waste Nomads. Oh, I was so close to finishing that sentence. Uh, just building them for the next few weeks. Hi Rob, thanks for coming along. I do recognise your name. You have been with us for a little while. Um, but really nice to see you. Thanks for coming along and joining in tonight. It's like, oh my god, I've, I've never seen the live chat. So chatty. Uh, Stafford, I have a confession to make. I lost a piece of paper with your number on it. Can you text me so as I can get in touch again? 
Oh, look at that. Easy eight making connections. That's lovely. Ah. Um, Adrian says, I'm taking a break from painting up my Legion, uh, First Legion Space Marines. I am currently working on the Seventh Legion Primarch. Ooh, so exciting. Um, I'm loving what you've done to Frank, says Leslie. Looking killer indeed. Hopefully killer. Going to kill everything with him. And I'm painting a piece of terrain that my dad bought me. Oh, that's nice. Um, so, Leslie, I know that you're a, a Nurgle player. Oh, we kind of got away from This is like a social club now, isn't it? <laughs> um, I know that you're a Death Guard player uh, or a Nurgle player. Death Guard. You do play Death Guard, right? Um, I recently saw like a little short video on YouTube while I was uploading some stuff for Easy 8 um, and I've joined, I've, I've subscribed to their channel because they make some really interesting little animated shorts and things but it's a video talking about the Tyranids fighting Nurgle and that they get, come across a, a verdant jungle um, planet and you think, yep, brilliant, we'll have this one, we'll eat this and be on our way and they get down there and it's the Death Guard, it's the Death Guard planet, yeah, cool um, and the Tyranids win, so pff, to you but they completely um, like you know Nurgle everything, um, and then when the Tyranids have finished consuming the planet, they move on. Um, but the hive ship that sucks everything up kind of gets all um, like toxic and stuff. So the hive fleet turn on it and kill it, and then um, you know better to lose a toe than a whole talon is how the whole story ends. I was like, that was cool. Like the Tyranids won, but you kind of like the Nurgle guys had like the last the last laugh. I thought it was really cool. Anyway, I just thought you'd like that because you're a Nurgle player. Um, not M, Mike is fine. <laughs> yeah. uh, Frostgrave is a treasure, treasure hunting tabletop game. Ah, okay, cool. I don't know where I got that impression from. Um, I have recently bought my partner a Gloomhaven, um, and that's kind of a treasure hunting tabletop game. Maybe that's a connection that I thought was actually what it was. Interesting, nonetheless. Hope you have a great time painting tonight. Mm. I'm actually going to put some paint on stuff. Easy Eight Social Chat Club. So, I've got some white ink on there. It's all dry now. Excellent. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make up a little wash. I was using Magic Blue last week, I think. Was it Magic Blue or was it Electric Blue? Let's just do Electric Blue. Start off light, right? Give it a good shake. And don't just shake it. <laughs> Nurgle. <laughs> No, poor Nurgle. <laughs> Take that to it is. <laughs> Love the Death Guard. Yeah, out of all four of the gods, I think. I think Nurgle's my fave. Don't just shake your paints. What do we do, staff? We put them on the Easy 8 pattern pending wasomatic. It's not pattern pending. It's not an Easy 8 thing. It's just a little nail varnish shaker. Wasomatic! It really does help me mix my paints up very, very quick. But I'm fairly certain if I keep it up for too long, it's going to give me carpal tunnel syndrome. So, yeah, there you go. Was it? Oh, no. I can't get rid of was it. Gone. There we are. Right. Let's mix up a little bit of magic blue. That doesn't matter if it's not the right colour. It looks like a nice one. And what I'm going to do... Um, I was using contrast medium, but it wasn't doing what I wanted it to do. So I'm going to use Lamia medium. You can't see that for the lights bleaching out against the white pot. <laughs> Here we go. Lamia medium. This is just a normal medium. So the contrast one is designed to give you more of a um, thicker filter, I suppose is the easy way of describing it. Turns it into a contrast paint, which, you know, love them or hate them. Sometimes they're really good. So I'm just going to... I think it's about 75% medium to paint because I don't want it to be an opaque colour. I want it to be quite translucent because I really want that white to shine through and I want there to be a little bit of a pattern left by, you know, the, the paint going on because it just makes it look random and, and cool basically. Let's just see if I pick the right colour. Yeah, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? I like it. So as long as it doesn't pull up too much and leave great big like coffee rings as such, it can look really quite natural. And I might come in and use a slightly darker blue and just kind of mottle in over the top of it as well. Probably a little bit too watered down there because it's kind of running away a bit too freely. What I do is I, I just started last week, I just started slapping it on. And then when I got it all over just 
one of these tendricles, that's what we're going to call them, I started just kind of lifting it off a little bit. So what you can see there, where it's all pulled up here, I don't know if you can see that so well, it's all sort of pulled up there. I'm just going to put the paintbrush bristles in there and then just pick it up a little bit. And um, yeah, it just lifts out the big puddles. Well, I don't want to go crazy because I do want the colour to be in there. And then just let it run around and settle again. That's looking pretty cool. It's just a nice colour. Now, after doing this last week with the blues, um, I was getting messages. Oh, it looks really good, but I don't know if blue is really the sort of colour for this colour scheme. By the end of the evening, trust me, it it really it looked the business. So I'm, I'm going to pursue it. I'm going to pursue it against the better judgment of the easy Eight community. Normally I follow everything you say, but it looked really cool. And it's not like the, the blue is a dominant colour across the whole army. Um, this is the first time that I've ever really used it. I do blue eyes, but that's obviously such a small detail that I don't think that that really counts. So I'm just um just gonna get it on each of these tentacles, making sure that I don't miss any areas. And because it's a pre-made model, um, given to me by the wonderful Leslie Stebbing in the live chat there, thank you so much again. Um, because it's pre-made, it's quite difficult to get in and around some places to to paint properly. So just making sure that you know. I do a good job of coverage. Just clean my brush out. A slightly damp, dry, dry brush now. Just absorb the bristles into the into the um, tissue on the side, and that does help me lift out the um, the colour a little. So where it's starting to pull quite heavily now, I could just come in there, just just dab ever so slightly, and then just wipe that off on the tissue. take what I've lifted off and um, actually deposit it elsewhere there's that much medium in there now I knew that the medium ratio would be troublesome to, to find again because I was just playing around with it last week just adding bits in I was even adding medium neat medium directly to the model once I'd put the paint on it um, so it was it was quite difficult to work at exactly what ratios I'd, I'd put everything on but it was fun and I was just having a chat with cares at the time I was like, oh my god, I've I've done it. And then yeah, I pushed it too far. As is oft the case. Now you can see in some places it's getting quite blue. I don't really want that. I don't want it to be too blue. I really want that white to be pushing through. And that's essentially giving me that illusion of um, translucency. Because like jellyfish, you can see right through it most of the time, can't you? Like a Portuguese man of war or something, which I know is not a true jellyfish, but you know, whatever. I hope you guys can see what I'm painting there. Normally I try and keep up with the live chat, but today I think it's going to be really difficult. So I'm just going to catch up wherever I can and let you guys just chat away. <laughs> I'm really grateful that the uh, community is getting really, really big now. Is the tricky bit is just getting in behind here so probably going to do my concentration voice bear with me while i go super silent please <laughs>
so hard to get into some of these little places in here. I've learned to get in under in, in there. Can you see in there? I actually have to go between the legs and under the tail and view it from the side because I lose all depth perception. <laughs> there we go. And then to do the yeah, I've got to come under here. But it is fun when you get it right. Okay, cool. So we we've got pretty much all the surfaces done there. Now what I'm going to do just to really reduce that blue because it has gone on quite stark. So I'm going to add neat medium to it. So clean my brush out. And straight from the pot. And it was at this point last week that because the paint has started to dry, I think, um, it was th the way that it was kind of reactivating the paint by putting the, the medium on it just seemed to, I don't know, break up the, 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 the appearance of it, the surface of it. And it stopped it looking like coffee rings or tea rings, whatever you want to call it. And it just looked really nice. And it was completely natural the way it just sort of happened without, with very minimal control really. Now what I want to make sure I do is avoid it migrating onto other parts of the model. So basically at contact points, um, because that, that would be bad. I don't want my whole Tyranid to be being electrocuted by his own gun, because that would be a bad flaw in the biological design. There's a little bit going on just down here now, so I'm just going to try and lift that away. Might get a little bit of um, unplanned object source lighting. <laughs> Got a little bit going on up there, but otherwise that's pretty cool. I'm not getting the same sort of patterns as I did last week, but you know, you can you can only try, can't you? Got itchy hand. Do you know what? For now, that's fine. It, it doesn't look as cool as it did last week, um, which is that's, that's all right. Like I say, it's, it's all experimenting, and, and I just like this kind of exploring it anyway sort of thing. So I'm just going to leave it like that, nice and pale blue, um, and I'm just going to let that dry. I was going to put a little bit of magic blue on there, but I think that might be the wrong thing to do. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to get some Dretchy Violet, give that a bit of a shake. Now, unfortunately, this pot is uh, is it's a dead pot, really. Um, I left it years ago. I left it ever so slightly open. It started drying the side, and then it got accidentally knocked over. So it's kind of all a little bit gross on the inside. But I can still water it down with medium or with thinner, um, and I can still turn it into the ripe viscosity. Um, uh, yeah, and and just apply it as as you normally would. It just takes a little bit of thought, basically. Um, it's just not a very nice. It's a very tacky, horrible, very powerful colour. Um, and I yeah, I, I have struggled with it in a, in a lot of my previous dealings. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get an amount of that over here. I don't want a lot of it. It's a very powerful colour, like I say. Um, and I'm just going to put a little bit on my um, palette just off the side here. It's just off the side because it's a very clean palette and I don't want anyone to be, you know, feel ashamed of their own palettes or anything. Cool. Just a little bit over there. Uh, while I'm waiting for that 
blue to dry. I'm just going to have a little catch up in the live chat because it's going bonkers over here. Um, wow. <laughs> Wasomatic puts me in mind of Wallace and Gromit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it does. It just came out one day. Wasomatic, yeah. Um, corn cares not from whence the blood flows, only that it does flow. That is absolutely true, Adrian. Uh, the tune is one, and that's all that matters. You know, net zero, maybe, maybe w minus one hive ship. <laughs> What's 0.1%? Who cares? <laughs> Jeff says, you've got to put it on t-shirts. Waz it. It'd be good to have easy eight. Yeah, like what you're saying, easy eight on the front. Waz it on the back. Um, I will start making merch when, when the community is nice and big. We'll go to Salute 50 and wear them all. Uh, Dave, oh, Dave's saying it. Yeah, Salute 50. We'll talk about Salute 50 in the second half of the show. But we're getting a nice little community now, and I really want to extend the invite out to people for that. Uh, but more on that later. Um, T-shirt or a hoodie or a mankini. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it would chafe. It's unsubscribes. Yeah, nice one. Cheers, guys. Thanks very much. <laughs> nice knowing you. Uh, has anyone ever thought of unicorn tyranids? Uh, I would try not to. Nope. <laughs> Friendly fluffy ones that don't bite your face off. Uh, how much unicorn DNA would a nid need to have? Hooves too, or just a horn? Um, is it not a unicorn too? Yes, it is. Um, it only needs one little bit of DNA. Just It'll take what it wants and then turn it into something, right? So I just need one unicorn. If there's only one, that's all I need. <laughs> it's, it's all getting a little bit out of control now. Tyranid unicorns or unicorn tyranids. Is there a difference? Probably. Because yeah. that sounds like a John Carpenter version of a of the My Little Pony, frankly. <laughs> make that happen. Yes, please. John Carpenter, if you're watching that, I want that. It will make my day. My life. Imagine if John Carpenter was actually watching Easy 8. That'd be fantastic. Right. Um, I'm just going to accelerate the drying process here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get my... Because <laughs> she doesn't even know I've got it up here now. My partner's hair dryer. I'm just going to mute the microphone because... I don't want to kill you all, um, so give me just a second. Hopefully you can hear that, and I've also just knocked over my bin by my feet, so um, that's comfortable. <laughs> okay, it's dry. It's dry enough. So um, what I'm going to do here, just on my palette, you can just see I've got like a little puddle of violet. It's, uh, it's a very strong colour and I don't need a lot of it. I'm just going to make sure that, that little tub's closed. Uh, and again, I'm just going to water it down, maybe with a little bit of water as well, but certainly with some medium, at least 50-50. And, and I'm going to use it sparingly, which is why I don't need an awful lot. So, yeah, there we go. It, it's quite a nice colour, I suppose, if you use it in the right way, in the right place. Um, I'm just, as I've said in a previous episode, probably a couple of years ago now, uh, I just don't really know how to work with purple. I really struggle with it. Um, so what, all I'm going to do now is so I'm just going to add it on um, really sparingly and just build it up where it wants to naturally. Um, and then if it starts to build up too much, then I just start taking it away. But I want the blue to be the dominant colour. So, like you can see now, you can still see that, that really bright white and electric blue shining through this violet. And that is absolutely how I want it. It looks really, really cool. And it's basically giving me those darker bioluminescent tones. Look at the way that's... I really hope that you can see that as clearly as I can see it. Because as the surface tension stretches that violet colour out, the blue really shines through it. And because they're both, you know, close to each other in the colour wheel, they um, they really complement each other really, really well. And it starts to look like a, a, a biological light source. Or at least in my mind, that's what happens. And that's all that matters. <laughs> And I was really starting to question the, the idea of doing blue, you know, electrical stuff last week. Especially when I was starting to get messages going like, oh, have I made the right choice? Is this, is it the right idea? Um, 
what I saw last week, it looked really cool, and I was like, yes, it is. And it's uh, for me, I suppose, right now, it's just about trying to recreate what I, what I did last time. So, yeah. Now I am putting it all over. I'm, I'm, I am kind of just going happy slap. Just get it on there, really. But it's, it's much thinner. So there's, um, it seems to be much um, more medium in there, perhaps. So maybe my um, blue medium ratio wasn't 75 to 25. This, because this seems to be much thinner. starting to build up a bit too much over here so I'm going to clean the brush out just dry those bristles off on the tissue and I just want to come in and just I don't want to start taking too much away I don't want it to be purple you know I want it to be I want it to be blue with hints of violet and what I can do in a minute is again just come in with some neat medium just drown it and what that will do is it will just pick up that colour and shift it around and it will pull it where it looks best I suppose I might need a bit more so I'm going back in Some more medium. Yeah, it's, I'm looking at it now. It's about 50 50, maybe a bit more medium. dark in some places especially on the front of this one here and obviously that's the prevalent one that's the one that you're going to see the most as someone viewing it from the tabletop so that's my my main area of concern I suppose is to make sure that one looks really cool yeah I think I um, actually mixed that violet up with some of the blue on the palette so to quickly go back in again get a bit more And I want to get to it all before it starts to dry too much so that I can put some more um, medium straight onto it just to kind of make it behave randomly. Trying to get to those hard to reach places is very difficult, obviously. Okay, before that paint dries, I'm just going to clean my brush out, straight in with a neat medium. Not too much. And I'm just going to just dab it on. And I'm just going let, to let it do its thing. And you get these really weird sort of natural formations and stains and as long as you don't get any hard defined lines it looks really cool
the white unfortunately has um, sort of lost its edge a little bit so I'm going to see if I just kind of saturate some areas this medium and thin the, the violet and the blue down a little see if I can bring that vibrant white back out again there it is starting to show up again really do hope you can see it on the um, on the camera there my, my monitor always shows bleached out lights um, but I know that it's a dodgy crappy old monitor so yeah hopefully you can see it Okay, cool. I'm just gonna let that dry naturally for a second. I want to use the hair dryer. I don't want to blow the stuff around. Um, and what I'm gonna do in a minute is um, gonna go to the Celia Green shade and use this even more sparingly. Um, and it just adds another dimension to it. The um, I find Drutchy is quite a weird color because I don't really know if it's a warm color or if it's a cold color. But it certainly feels like it's got more warmth to it than the blues do blues being a slightly cooler color so when I add the green onto it it's got a really sort of cool shade and uh, I, I don't know it just it adds like a, a totally different depth to it and like I say last time it just seemed to have that pearlescent quality that made it look really cool I don't really know what I'm talking about I'm, I'm really I'm just trying to kind of explain um, you know how something appeared at the end of last week's show um, but it does look cool and what I like about it is it just kind of stands out if I had a few of this particular weapon um, in the army um, you, you'd see them, they'd stand out and hopefully every weapon will have like a, a characteristic that will stand out a little bit so that as an enemy you, you fear it or, or you know revile it or, or as, as a player me I go oh these guys I want to look after these guys because they got the blue cool electric weapons or whatever it's just nice to have something different on the gun um, let's have a look at the live chat <laughs> uh, oh god talking about nukes oh my goodness you're going to upset all my tyranids <laughs> so not being a 40k player, if you fight the bugs, are you going to lose? Even if you win on the table, they come in and join the hive ship, so really all you're going to do is die a bit later. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you have to kill the hive ships, Adrian is absolutely right, but that is uh, insanely difficult. Nukes, yeah, nukes, nukes are, are a good way of dealing with it, um, but they are a hyper-intelligent race. They probably know that you have nukes and they'll probably do something to counter it. Just saying. Um, yeah. Yeah, nukes bad. <laughs> Unless corn turns up, then there are literal mountains of alien skulls. Yeah, but they're demons. That's something else, right? Uh, Rob says, was there a part of the law that said that the Imperium were trying to send all the ships to one area to kind of um, eat each other uh, and a load of orcs, but it went wrong? Yes, uh, the Eldar do that. They they play like the long game, so. Um, because they live for millennia they they have lots of time to play with and obviously they they have like foresight as well so or far, they call it farsight foresight um they can see the future or at least ways that it could happen so they often try to redirect other armies factions and races and things um into the path of the tyrannies to direct them all around their own ships uh, eldar are uncaring unsympathetic and selfish and don't really care about you uh, just about themselves so if their craft world their giant spaceship which they live on is in the way of a tyrannid high fleet they will try to send orcs or whatever in their way but that of course does feed the great devourer and makes them stronger in time you know so who knows um like i said can i ask a mundane question in the this randomized humor i have the discord app on my phone but i haven't really used it much before i want to share a photo but where do i put it so on discord down, down the side luke who isn't online right now um has made our discord server it's it's still quite i say not new it's been around for a little while but because we've got only a few real subscribers compared to a lot of the big discord channels out there um it's a little less used than a lot of you know than, than say our facebook page um so down the left hand side 
um, at least on the PC version. There are lots of different um, rooms and areas that you can kind of just leave things in there. It totally depends on where you want to put it in there. Um, if it's a work in progress, there's a little section in there for work in progress. If it's um, you know, something that you've recently finished, then you can put it in there. I think that Luke's even made a little um, slot for me to put in my own Tyranid family, which I will update with and populate with some photos very soon if you like. Um, but it's totally up to you. Um, what will happen when you put a photo in there is it will pop up to anyone who's a part of the Discord server uh, with a little um, red notification blob saying that there's a new thing in here and it will highlight it. So if you put things in there, it won't get lost. People will see it. So it's entirely up to you. Of course, if you just want to stick it on Facebook, then you can do that as well. Whatever you like. So if it's a work in progress, pop it in work in progress. I think there's even one in there for food and drink. So when the community gets really big and they want to talk about what they're eating. <laughs> yeah, man, he went mental. He did all that for me for free. It was great. Thank you very much. Um, seems to be a bunch of channels that goes in one of them. Which one? Yeah, yeah, literally just, yeah, just choose whichever one you like, mate. Um, Inquisitor Critman, Critman, yes, um, sent the, sent them to a world inhabited by orcs, and they're still fighting in the law too. Yeah, it is a really good story. There, there's there's lots of that sort of stuff. Inquisitor Critman is the sort of person who will um, condemn an entire planet of humans to um, what they call exterminatus, which is basically fire bombing and, and nuking and virus bombing the entire planet before the Tyranids get there to deny them the um, the biomass that they will consume. Harsh, right? It's a grim, dark story. So, we're a little bit drier now. So, now I feel like I can just hit this with a hairdryer. So, I will do that again. And probably knock over the bin. Ugh. I'm getting old. Right. Mute. Okay, I did knock over the bin again. Just wanted to stop there, just because it looked like it was pooling up a little bit at the bottom, but it doesn't look that bad actually. It's quite cool. Just on this back one here, um, underneath on this side, it is pooling a little, so I'm just going to go with a little bit of water on the end of my brush and just see if I can. It did! It worked! Yay for me! Wonderful. Okay, cool. So, let's get some of this Celia Green Shade. I hope that's how you say it. <laughs> what do you mean, getting? Careful now. <laughs> so, um, choose a different socket. A socket, bowl, bit on my palette. Uh, I'm just going to stick some Celia green shade in there. It's a really, really cool green colour. I like it. It's really nice. Just going to get a bit more. There we go. And again, just going to stick a load of medium in there. And this time I might even add a little bit of water just to make it even thinner. Um, because I want it to... Every colour I add on there, I want it to be less dominant than the last one. I don't want to drown that white out. Which I think I've already done. But we'll cover that later, perhaps. See what happens. Nice colour, I like it. Now, last week, this is where the magic really happened. See the difference between the two sides there already. Now, like I say, this is by far, um, far from a perfect color scheme, and it's definitely something that you know perhaps I'll I'll really work on over time. So, uh, uh, keeping that in mind, 
like I, I know it's it's not going to be amazing. So I can appreciate appreciate it for what it is and what it's trying to be, rather than making it trying to make it what it is before I can appreciate it. That was really prophetic, wasn't it? Fortunately, that white seems to have been lost a little bit, and I'm going to see if I can maybe pick that white back out again later by dry brushing it or just doing like a really gentle highlight or something just along some of the edges. And once I've got this colour all over every part of it, what I'm going to do, rather than adding medium and flooding the whole area with medium, is I'm going to flood the whole area with water. Um, just to try and break the surface tension up a little bit because I want it to appear a bit more randomly. It's cool, right? Because it sounds like I know what I'm talking about when I really don't have a clue. Making up as I go along. I hope that shows you what it looks like, like properly, because it is super sweet. What I'll do is, like I always say, I'll, I'll take some photos, um, like during the intermission or um, after the show, and uh, I'll put them on Facebook for you to have a little look at. And then over the weekend, I'll uh, upload all the photos I've been meaning to do for a long time and put them on Instagram, because I've got a day dedicated to being in the studio, which is going to be great. Cool. I really like it. It just needs that little white to come through. I'll probably put the um, the violet and the blue on a little bit too a bit too thick or you know a little too opaque because it the yeah, the last time I did it the white was still showing through and it really made it look um, a lot brighter. So what I was using for the white was this ink. That's probably the wrong product to use here. So what I'm going to do on a table covered in paint pots. <laughs> Um, is I'm gonna find my white paint, which is there it is cool here, and I will use that as maybe a dry brush, probably as an edge highlight. I don't want to dry brush it basically, um, so I'm gonna give that a good old shake and then give it a waz. It's been a little while since I've mixed that up, um, so I, I want it to be nice and nice and fluid, nice and supple. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Leslie. <laughs> You see what I mean? Like it's it's far from a perfect paint scheme, but it's getting the message across, right? And I think I, I think I can like practice and perfect that. Adrian is saying that the um, in the law the first Tyrion invasion was only defeated by Marnius Kalgar. Uh, for those of you who don't know who he is, that is the uh, the leader of the Ultramarines, the Blue Space Marines. Um, um, Ordering the detonation of a warp core in the middle of a hive fleet, destroying the hive ships. Cool, right? And he's the dude who named them. I didn't know that. I knew that they were named after the first planet they were found on. Tyran, or Tyran, whichever one you want to pronounce it. Okay, a little bit of white paint in the palette there. For in a minute, I will just probably water it down a little bit and I'll just do some edge highlighting on there and um, to see if I can bring out just a few because it's got like some like flat creases and things so, so there's like some sharpish edges on there and see if I can bring those those edges out a little bit and just yeah bring the white out maybe a slight dry brush but I don't want to dry brush it anyway getting stuck by indecision another go with the hairdryer White is showing up a little bit more now that I've dried it off. Um, I'm going to wait for that to dry properly before I go in and um, do those edge highlights on there. There are other details on here that I want to do today. I've got to do this eye. The eye is going to be 
um, very similar colour to the blue, um, but hopefully it'll be a stronger blue so it won't look like that they are too um, similar. Although if it does, it won't look so bad. Um, I want to highlight the teeth a little bit because I did the teeth in the same way that I've done the bone colour. And I really do like my little recipe for the bone colour. It works so well, it's so easy to do. But the teeth are so small, they often blend away into the yellow. So I'm going to use a little bit of white, not the... Um, the bone white colour because that makes them look yellow because they're so small but if I use a little bit of white I'm just going to pick the edges of them and hopefully make them stand out and also um, all over the Tyranid there are these little vents I don't know what you want to call them like vents or the, like exposed muscles or whatever and in the joints so I'm going to do all of those in a bone white colour and then I'm going to hit those with some crimson uh, shade and that will uh, hopefully um, make them all turn pink like this kind of muscle tissue stuff here at the front of this gun um, and that's very close to being finished with all the detail bits I might go around and highlight some of the um, bones because they're looking a little bit dull but there's also some other little details like there's this little pipe that sticks out here I don't really quite know what to do with that so I might choose something to do with this um, there's also like this bit here don't really know so I've got some decisions to make I don't like leaving random details not detailed see what happens first things first though let's start putting some paint down so the color I'm gonna use is the Citadel Screaming Skull Ugh. give that a good old waz because this one really separates as well there we go lovely I really like this colour. I say it every week, don't I? But I really like this colour. Citadel have made a good colour with Screaming Skull. Just a little bit of water to that to make it nice and creamy smooth. nice fine point on my brush okay and I'm gonna start on this leg here I'm gonna work my way up the side and then down the other so here we go tricky spot in this knee section got some rogue bristles appearing let's try and push those back into order gonna move on to the arm up here but of course we are getting very close to that time 
almost time for a little break. So, um, just while, before we go, I'm going to see if I can get the second arm down here. So I'm looking at doing these vents. It's getting dry on my paintbrush there. Now sometimes when I'm doing these little vents here, I'm just going to run on the edge of the, the bristles along to get these little details. What happens is you end up just picking up the edges. So like a lot, it looks really cool straight away. Other times you just end up getting the paint just caked in there. And if, if you're finding the same, don't worry, because what we're going to do in a minute is we're going to put a shade in there or, or, or a, you know, a really watery wash. And even though you can't see the details, the paint will run into them and it will make all those details stand out. So the difference between this little vent here and this little vent here, they're quite different. But in a minute, they, they will look the same. here we've got this tiny little line here in the crease of the elbow but you can barely get a paintbrush in there but the thing is is you can see it so it really needs staining so what I'm gonna do is just quickly and as neatly as I can get the paint in there I'm not gonna worry about going all the way around because it's in a hidden area and I've got a little bit of overspill, so I'm going to clean my brush out really quick. And um, with some heavily damp bristles, let's just go around the outside edge there and just lift up any overspill. But you've got to get in there quick. And that's done the job. Nice. And then hopefully when I put the, um, the uh, crimson in there later on, it'll make it look even better. So that's that done. And now I'm going to move on to the last arm there on this side. This brush is working so much better for me than the other one. Just a bit of a duff brush as the other. Here we go. So. bit in the elbow crease spill there. Oh, I've done it again. I'm rushing. <laughs> okay, damp bristles. Wash it away, wash it away. Perfect crime, no one would ever know. Brilliant! There we go. Oh, is that Rob going? 
Uh, thanks for a good bit of hobby, everyone. Uh, I'm off ready for work now. Got to go prime eight Ash Waste Nomads. Vanish too. Happy with that. Have a nice evening, everyone. Back soon. Thanks, Rob. Uh, I, uh, if you're not seeing us right now, I hope to see you later on. Um, take care. Have a lovely evening. Thanks for coming along. Um, wonderful. I will see you guys in 10 minutes. I, I was almost going to say goodbye there because I was saying goodbye to Rob. Um, yeah, we'll be back in 10 minutes. See you later, Rob. See you next week. Uh, whatever you're doing, no matter what it is you're doing, go change your paint water. See you in a minute. Bye-bye.
welcome back hope you had a good break um i went and made a fresh cup of tea because it's really cold downstairs and i did a little dance to try and warm up um it's definitely warmer up here in the studio which is i always say this don't i like it's stupid cold here in the winter and in the summer i can barely be up here it's, it's horrible so um yeah <laughs> when i'm comfortable i'll just uh, i'll quit moaning about it um yeah I, i've I haven't um, done anything during the break there. Uh, I didn't go and change my paint water. Barely used it, so it doesn't matter. Trust me. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> uh, and I'm now just kind of carrying on painting all of those little details in that bone white colour. Uh, including the little pipes on the arms that I pointed out earlier on. I, I don't know what colour to do them, so in the absence of, of, of knowing, um, I'll just paint it a colour and, and get it painted. Because... I like a, a little detail, that, especially like these these bits that are so obvious to see. I like them to be painted in something that kind of fits with the scheme. And if I need to at a later date, I can always come back and paint these little bits again. That's that's not going to be a big a big issue, right? So uh, yeah, just kind of working my way around. Remember, if you like what we do here, uh, we're here for another hour. Um, do consider you know following, liking, sharing, subscribing. Every little bit really helps make the community get a little bit bigger. Today is like one of the biggest I've seen the live chat in such a long time. It's been really, really chatty. So uh, you guys are doing excellent in, in getting the name of Easy 8 out there. And I, and I really appreciate it of, of it. I'm really struggling today. Really appreciative of it. It's probably not English. Whatever. Anyway, to the workbench. So yeah, here we go. Um, the the blue stuff is nearly dry. It's not nearly as white and bright as it was the last time. I took a photo of it, popped it on Facebook a minute ago, um, and it doesn't really do it the justice that uh, I was hoping it would do on the photograph. But you can still get an idea of what it looks like. I am going to come in in a minute and, and just um, edge highlight um, it, hopefully, and make it look really good. Um, but in the meantime, I'm just kind of going around picking up all these little little joints and vents and you know I don't know alien anatomy parts I don't really know what they are just some details right there's a little bit of green overspill down here so I'm probably going to um, have to get some thinner on that in a minute or airbrush cleaner you could be really careful with it but it's a very good way of tidying up your model Like, you know, one brush stroke too much and you'll <laughs> erase everything right down to grey plastic, so you've got to be careful with it. But for someone like me, who makes mistakes all the time, because I cannot paint or draw between the lines, it's very useful. When I left for to make a new cup of, another cup of tea just a minute ago there is a cat right outside the door and out there um but he won't sit outside there unless the window is open he sits in the window if you don't open it and he meows at you and makes you feel very guilty that you don't let him out so you open the window and then he goes and sits on the stairs outside the door cat life so to keep the cat happy the window is open but it is freezing outside so yeah one of the reasons as to why it's so cold in the house right now. And the other cat is asleep, so she doesn't care. Wouldn't give him up for the world. I really like all these details on Tyranids because they just break up the um, the amount of flesh colour on the whole thing. So it just stops it looking like a massive pile of yellow bits. <laughs> Staff says, mmm, cutting card with the Stanley Blade while drinking Baileys. What could go wrong? <laughs> Interesting. I had a night on the Baileys with some friends last night. Um, one of my friends got very, very drunk. Um, and more uh, uh, talking about um, cutting mats. Just, just off, off this thing here. Just about above my foot, below my finger here. 
just as I was getting ready for the show, I was like, call it something sharp, stuck to my mat. A couple of weeks ago, I had cut something, snapped a scalpel blade, and the last three millimeters were stuck in there and was just protruding up enough for me to catch my skin on. I could have actually opened myself up quite badly on it, so um, yeah, be careful. I was uh, watching the clock, waiting to start the show and trying to dig it out of the pair of old tweezers. It, it is removed. It's just on the side of the table. Okay. So all those little joints bits are all done now. I think. Yep, yeah, can't see that one. Excellent. Let's have a quick check all the way around, make sure I haven't missed any bits. Yep, yeah, I'm happy with that. That's looking cool. So yeah, there's like a weird pipe in here look, and for this double arm, which is really cool by the way, I really like that. Um, it's a bit bleachy, isn't it? Let's move those lights out. Um, and then just over here, there's this little pipey bit that sticks out here, and I thought it'd be kind of cool to do them the same blue to make it look like the, the kind of electrical bits all kind of go through in, but as cool as that would be, I, I like the distinction that the gun is a separate creature, which they are. The gun should be a separate creature, therefore it shouldn't go through I don't know maybe eventually I'll do it that way who cares let's move on all those bits are all done uh, <laughs> Dave's agreeing with me there's a lot that could go wrong Stafford look after yourself I hate these pots let's um where's my naff tweezers here we go it's that little prongy bit down there that is helps keep the lid open but it stops the lid from closing probably this is where I flick paint everywhere now there we go gotcha what's a fight with it right um <laughs> Mike says, uh, at least with the blades and the brush, there's no danger of trying to clean it in the Baileys. <laughs> well, uh, maybe. Considering you're unable to injure yourself with a foam ball, Mr. Corsi, an awful lot could go wrong. You could get blood in your Baileys. Uh, depends on how much Baileys he's had, uh, how much that makes a difference to him, I suppose. Mmm. That tea is delicious, but hot. Okay, so... Um, gonna wait for the all the joints and bits let's call them joints bits because I like that um, to dry properly uh, in the meantime I'm gonna do some edge highlighting on the electrical bits it might be the wrong thing to do so I'm gonna go very very tentatively um, into the unknown here um, it might ruin everything so I'm gonna make sure that the the white is watery not too watery that perfect magic mix you know Goldilocks zone of not too watery and um, just gonna see if I can just pick the edges out a little job so far. Okay, I'm going to go for a more of a dry brush edge highlight because the paint is a little bit uncontrollable. Then I'm doing larger lines than what I'd wish. So by rubbing most of the paint off the side of the brush there, still too much. Is it not working? See how much it, there's nothing on the bristles, but if I by wiping it across my pad you can see how much there's paints inside those bristles there. Thank you. 
Nope, I don't like the way it's going, so I don't want to ruin it. So, save myself some time there, I suppose. Swipe that away. In the future, the white needs to bleed through more. That's fine. Don't ruin it. It looks cool the way it is. So, I suppose I will use a little bit of the white that I've got set aside for that project, and I'm going to just um, pick out those teeth a little bit because they are a little bit unseen. Now, like I said, if I was to do this with the, um, the Screaming Skull, which is a bone white colour, um, they are so small details right up against the yellow that they disappear completely and they kind of get blended in with the yellow. And I don't like that. So, just a very small amount on the end of a very fine point here. I'm just going to pick them out a little. Closer to the tips of them. Yeah, it's really standing out now. That's good. So just by doing the, the, the tippy points of them, um, they still have the sort of uh, the bony colour, they still have the brown wash on them as well, and it just kind of you know adds a little bit of depth to them. That's really cool. Um, I've got some other bony bits around here that need a bit of dry brushing, um, but actually what they need is the bone colour because they are larger areas. So, wash the white out, put that to a side. I was using Kez's very cool brush the other week. Um, this little army painter one here. So I'm going to get a tiny amount of moisture in the bristles of the dry brush. So literally, that's a, that's a dot of water from my fingertip. And I'm just going to pad that in there. And it just moistens up the bristles and get most of it out. There we go. I'm going to touch into the white paint just a tiny amount. And... I've done, the, I've done the wrong colour paint. I want the bone colour. That should be better. There we go. It's got a little bit of white mixed into it, but that's not a bad thing when you're trying to highlight something, I suppose. And you can see how pale of an individual I am because my lights are bleaching me out entirely and the paint is mixed in with my own skin hue. <laughs> Just trying to make sure there's no big wet streaks of paint because if I did it would look awful um, and the immediate areas that I can see that need a bit of attention is this the foot claws here so it's like a little spare on the back just there um, and probably his hoof as well so I'm just going to undo the clamp and, and spin him around oh sorry Frank actually quite a tight area to get into so I am actually going to use um, my posh brush but I'm going to use it ever so gently <clears throat> in a way that I was doing just a minute ago really trying to get that white color on there it's what I do is I just kind of saturate the bristles of my brush get most of it on there get most of the, the bristles covered and then just wipe most of it off onto a paper towel now I'm very aware that um, this could ruin my bristles, so it's all about technique really. I'm not going to be going and scuffing the whole area up. All I'm going to be doing is just doing, just, just wiping across. Even that probably was just a bit too much there.
There's a bit of hard staining there, just from the uh, browns that I've used. There's a bit of a tough um, sort of transition edge of the colour. There's a bit of tea staining essentially. Um, with, so with a detail brush, I can actually just um, use the fine point just to kind of go in and, and soften that that transition line up. A couple of rogue bristles because I've mistreated the brush a little. Let's just tease those back into behaving. There we go. Again, like the teeth, I'm just trying to get the edges of these talons, j just the very tips of them, really. Bring them right back to that bright off-white colour. Makes them look sharp and pointy. Same with his hooves. hands which are actually quite hard to see unless I brighten those up a little bit. I think I might even come with just a little bit of white on those as well just to really make them stand out. I'm also just going to make the, um, the spiky bits on here just a bit more pointy. by really whitening the ends up there. Oh, a bit too far. Excellent. Cool. Right. Just wash that brush out and give him some love because didn't do didn't treat him very nicely there. <laughs> You've just flicked cardboard into your what into your Baileys. What are you doing with your? Oh, I don't understand, Stafford. How have you done this? Uh, Leslie says I love how the weapon is looking. Oh, I'm starting a Nid Army next month. Perhaps when I've got a sizable army built, we can have a game of Knights Edition. Uh, see who chops it the first. Do you know what? I'm really interested in playing a narrative game with you. We'll play, we'll play a narrative version of the of the story that I saw the other day. How's that sound to you? We'll, we'll arrange a time. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be wicked. Let's do it. <laughs> you can't start a Tyranid Army. This is your Tyranid Army. You gave them to me. <laughs> right. Um. I'm just going to let everything dry on there a minute because I feel that um, I've done a bit of work on it. I just need to kind of just set for a minute. This is a perfect opportunity to talk about some of the things that I've written about for this week. I'm just going to scoop all of these paint pots over here because I'm going to need a little bit of space for what comes next. Here's some tea. By the way, cheers. Happy Friday. Mmm, <laughs> cardboardy. Yeah. So, you'll remember last week I spoke about um, a, a company in London, a games supplies company called uh, the pit gaming shop uh, or the pit gaming store no it's pit gaming shop um, and i spoke to these guys at the plymouth um association of war gamers show balls i got chatting to a guy called matt who was just a really nice guy and was super enthusiastic super keen and it was just um it was just a really enthusiastic chat and uh, I, I was just talking to him about some of the products that he was selling and they, he, they, they because there's, there's more than Matt, uh, were selling some products by a company called Animolia. Um, Animolia have their own website, there is a link down there. 
go check them out you won't be disappointed even if you don't buy from them their products are ingenious um, they do terrain boards now I know there's lots of different terrain boards and stuff out there already and there's gaming mats and I've got a couple they are wonderful they're a great great way a great way a great way of making your tabletop look good very easily um, and you should have a great tabletop uh, you shouldn't be playing around coke cans I don't think if you're starting out that's fine but if you're putting love and passion and time into your models I think you should do them justice by having your table looking the same so now that I'm older and I'm not really, really young and I've got a little bit of money, I've been starting to look for ways of making my tables look really cool. So naturally I have gaming mats and these took my eye. I've got one just on the side here, a big box of these things. I got chatting to Matt and they had some of their um, demo pieces up on the table. Um, I ended up buying some from Animolia. Here is the box set. Um, so it's, it's a huge box. It's, it's A4, but it's like easily this thing uh, if I hold up to this camera you can see here like so you can see how big it is um, so there are four river sets in this box the idea is that they are elevated ever so slightly you can see from this diagram here they boost up from your tabletop the idea is that you can have um, hills and slopes and cliffs and rivers and valleys and pits and mounds and what Ever. It is insane the amount of stuff that they do. Um, and these ones have a three centimeter lift, but you can have boosters that push everything up. You can have so you can have massive slopes that interconnect and with boosters underneath them. So you can have a tabletop that goes six feet into the air if you really want to. They are absolutely fantastic. Now they are made from a higher density fiberboard than MDF. I've tried to look for that product, I can't find it, but the MDF itself looks very very clean they also have a very good laser cutting technology um, so as far as I'm aware it is a standard for most laser cutters but it has like a little air blower on there as well and it blows the soot away uh, as it's cutting if you buy um, laser cut terrain you'll often find it's got soot marks on it and it can get quite dirty on your fingertips I love it I love the smell of it as well um, but it makes it for a cleaner product they also have a lower frequency setting to their laser so I'm told so that there's a very little if if no cleanup whatsoever required the idea is that you pop all of these uh, items out of the sprues put glue on them and, and they mostly they they're tight fit anyway the idea with this is that you they are coming they come in one foot square sections is that um you with just a couple of box sets you can have uh, a totally um modular um changeable terrain board um and being that it's high density mdf you can sculpt on it paint on it glue it put all the things on it that would normally make you go, oh, is it going to warp? Is it going to warp? It doesn't warp because of the high density nature of this particular product. Um, so the idea is, is that you can sculpt and paint and spray and do all those sorts of things on it too. An absolutely fantastic product. And I spent probably about an hour um, looking through all the products. Literally, they were letting me hands on with it all. Like I was, you know, really going to town with it all. And there was a table in the in the area playing a war game with this set on there as well. The only thing that I didn't like about it, and I was really trying to like find something because I like to be crit you know, critical sometimes is that when you have a table set up, the exposed parts are a bit distracting. So I said to Matt from the Pit Gaming Shop, I said, it's a shame that, I wish there was something that you could put on the side of it that clips onto it and, and hides that, that little bit, yeah? And he said, oh, the guys, Animolia, they they um, they listen to all all customer feedback. In fact, there's a lot of the sets out there that are based off of feedback from customers. They listen to everything. So he said he was going to pass it on to them because he has a very good relationship with them absolutely wonderful really enthused and, and i mentioned about them last week um and i and i said to matt that i was going to give him a really big shout out there's a link down there as well to both animolia and the pit gaming shop um so if you're watching again matt um yeah i'm, I'm just going to continually shout you up because i think that your enthusiasm was just fantastic your products were great animolia is wonderful i'm sure you'll agree um however when when i bought the river section from matt with some other bits and pieces I got home, I opened them, they're not rivers. I know, alarm. It was actually a, a, a set of slopes. Um, and it's, there were three slopes in there. Uh, there's, there's a lot more stuff to slopes because obviously rivers is just a couple of bits, right? Um, so you get three slopes in a box, for still for £25, so it wasn't like I um, wasted money. I sent an email to Matt uh, through their website saying, oh no, shock alarm. And it was like, honestly, so sorry that happened. Obviously, it's not the pit gaming shop's fault. It was an error by Anima Anim um, Animalia. Anomalia, trying to make sure I say it properly. Um, 
it wasn't the end of the world but the uh, matt at the gaming shop a pit gaming shop said um hold on to these these are yours our bad we'll send you out some rivers so i've got some slopes and some rivers and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna do um a, like a whole show uh, like maybe a couple of shows of building them uh, painting them putting static flock on them sculpting them making them look really cool these are gonna be for um or at least two of them are gonna be for my 15 millimeter tank games because i play 15 millimeter tank games um, but i also want to have a load for things like 40k so 28 millimeter scale as well they are absolutely fantastic if you go to anomalia um dot Org, I think it is the links down there um, they actually have a digital builder where it's a three-dimensional um, system where you can pick and choose what you want click them together in whatever way you want it gives you the product codes to, you know, for the different products depending on how you've made your imaginary um, games table and then you can go straight to cart from there so you can literally build a 3d digital version and then buy the product straight through them if you get them through the pit gaming shop there's a link down there you'll get 15 percent off of the price so not that i want to take the customer away from animalia they've already made their money i suppose if you get what you want um you know decide what you want from the system on animalia's website go to the pit gaming shop and get your 15 percent off you're welcome absolutely brilliant product i really wanted to shout about those because um yeah last week i was like oh no i've got the wrong set so thank you matt thank you pick gaming shop uh, and also to animali if you ever see this which i'm not sure if you will at the moment but um absolutely fantastic product and i look forward to filling my whole studio with this stuff because it's brilliant it really is fantastic there we go cool so, uh, Leslie says, sounds epic, Dan. And yes, I, I can. And nope, it's your army, buddy. <laughs> oh, thanks very much. And yes, it would be brilliant to play a game with you. We'll, we'll arrange something heavy and scratchy looking. Yes, I put that box on the top of Stafford's car when we went to <laughs> when we went to the Plymouth Amateur War Gaming Society. And I slid it across. And there was a tiny piece of grit underneath the box that I didn't notice. And as I passed it to him, I scratched a very long line in his car paintwork. I was mortified. Sorry. A moment's silence, please. Okay. <laughs> uh, Kes told me about them. They look killer. Yeah, they're brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, honestly, go and have a look on their website. It doesn't work so well on mobile, so if you've got your laptop or something like that, do it on there. It's a little bit um, clunky. Doesn't? Yeah, it's, it's not made for mobiles. Who cares? You've got a PC. Mm. Anyway. Back to Frank. Let's be Frank. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> right. Okay. That was rubbish. I'm gonna put some crimson wash on those bits I've painted. Looking for my crimson. It is an absolute pit of despair in here. There it is. Cool. Wonderful. Give that a shake. Lovely. Don't need to waz that so much. Oh, do I? Look at all that silt build up down there. Here we go. Waz it! Who ever thought that I'd be wazzing a, a wash? There we go. Cool. That's better. Good thing that wasomatic. You should get one. Let's see if I can get some branded ones. That'd be awesome, right? Okay, cool. So let's get some crimson. I really don't like these pots. They just want to flick everything all over the place, right? Let's scoop a load out and pop it on my palette. Okay, so to make sure I hit every area properly, I'm going to start from the same place I started earlier on, and I will, on the heel over here, it's a bit tricky just trying to get that wash just to saturate such a small and quite frankly smooth area here it goes there we are nice and now just in this little thigh bit here
doesn't want to show itself so well. Let's get a bit more. I've managed to get the paint pot to stay open now. Now I can take it straight from the pot. Okay. Just keeping an eye on that time. 22. Time is flying past tonight, right? A bit quiet now. It was very chatty earlier on. Thanks for coming along, everybody. It's really made my evening. Feeling quite poorly today as well. Like I've got a really, really sore throat. It feels like razor blades. I've got wisdom teeth pains. And, um, yeah, it's just been... It's been feeling a bit rotten, really, today. Not rotten enough that I couldn't come on the show or not get to work or something like that, but, you know... All those sorts of things that paracetamol just wasn't touching the edges either. So it's nice to come along and see people talking happy and stuff, you know. You see how in this little detail here, the outside edges are really quite bold in colour. Um, that does dry a little bit fainter, but it bothers me that um, the outside edges seem to be more, or seem to be darker or more defined than the um, the interior lines. And it almost looks like a wound. I'm not too keen on it, um, but it will dry better than that. Because it's so defined, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back into this little bit here, look, and I'm going to pick this one out a bit more. Just being careful that I don't get any overspill. There we go. And it's just because the um, the detail is quite deep, so um, you get like a lot of pooling on the outside. You know, like um, you get like a meniscus where where the uh, the water tension kind of curves the liquid up to meet the sides. Meniscus, you're, you're welcome. You can keep that word. A meniscus is a water feature or a liquid feature created by surface tension of the liquid. So if you fill your glass up and you get the little bulb or the bulbous bit that appears like a bulge on the top of that's a meniscus or the bit where it scoops up to meet the inside of a container. Meniscus. Yep. I wrote that into my staff quiz for work. Okay, that's all looking good, isn't it? Just going back over some of the features on there. Just making sure that they're all nicely defined. It's a, it is a process, this. It is, um... Kind of, like, work your way across and then kind of go back before you get too far. And just go back over them again. This will be the last week that I work on Frank and, and Betty. If I was to, to bet it, yeah, it's Betty, isn't it? Yeah, if I was to work on Betty, it would be exactly the same thing as it's Frank all over again. And to be frank, we have been working on Frank for too long for it to be an interesting show anymore. So, I don't know what I'm going to do next week to break it all up. I might move on to more Tyranids. I might um, move on to something a little bit more different. Uh, I might go and do some tanks for a little bit. 
Um, I haven't made any of the terrain that I want to do, so I'm not going to do that just yet, but I am looking forward to moving into doing some terrain. Um, whether it be um, buildings or um, the tile sets or anything like that. I don't know what it is I'm going to do just yet. Uh, Jeff has been talking to me a little while ago because Jeff is my dad, for those of you that don't know. Um, he makes cool terrain for people. Uh, is, is a world-class sought-after terrain buildings maker um, and has a resin sort of terrain range um, and has a massive crater um, that you can fit a whole squad of space marines in and more. Uh, and we've been thinking about um, doing like a giant um, reclamation acid pool for the Tyranids. So as simple as that might be, it, it would still be fun to do it and to kind of do the, the liquid thing in the middle. So that, that's something that we can do as well. But actually what I'm really thinking about doing is um, actually doing something with dinosaurs. Because I've got a couple of resin printed dinosaurs that I picked up from Desane Studios. Link just down the bottom there if you're interested. And um, we've got a T-Rex and an Ankylosaurus. And I've also got like um, a Thunderbird mower, um, which uh, came after the dinosaurs, what the dinosaurs evolved into. Giant terror birds. Um, they're just amazing models. And I, and I just want to have some fun and paint something a bit more, um, you know, creature-esque but I don't think I really have the paints for it all my paints are really quite bright vibrant paints that I don't think would suit a dinosaur so um, yeah I don't know I'm gonna have a little shop around and see if I can find some like good animal colors because I quite like to do them you know like tiger stripes but in greens and things like that and I just have a good go and explore something that I've not done before and well if you know me you know that I love dinosaurs so that's just something something different to do right of course if I run out of time and I and I haven't kind of come up with any ideas then I can always come back and do some more Tyranids or I can you know do some tanks but we have been working on Frank for a while now and, and it's time to put that story to bed I, I hope to have Frank finished over the weekend um, and I've also got like a whole collection of other tyrannies that as I've been trying to catch up or yeah, do something different on the show and, and move on I've, I've actually had little bits left to do on them um, and I've not done them <laughs> so my Trigon still got some armor plates that need finishing um, my Carnifex um, has got some details that I'm sure could do with being refined so um, yeah we'll uh, I, I hope to kind of spend Sunday catching up with some friends online playing some video games you can come and join me I'll be on discord um, if you want to uh, and I'll you know throughout the day I'll, I'll also be doing some painting as well to try and bring them all up to speed so that when I fight Leslie against his death guard he could be defeated by a fully painted Tyranid force. It's happening. It is happening. We'll make an easy eight event out of it. Battle reports and everything. Or beers. Okay, I think I think we made it all the way around. I'm just going to go back and just check. So start here. Heels. Shins. Could do a bit more definition in there, can it? Yeah, there we go. Knees. Thigh. It's looking very good. Yep, I like that. Just going to stick another go in there. There we go. First arm. Elbows. First forearm. Nice. Oh, bit of overspill. Yes. Second forearm or bicep forearm elbows and weird pipey bits. Cool. Wrists. Let's 
looking good. There, lovely, cool. So I'm gonna do the eye, and I'm gonna do the base. Oh no, there's a bit in there. Oh my gosh. How could I miss that? So, we need to get some of that um, skull colour in there, don't we? We've only got a few minutes left of today's show, so if there's anything that you wanted to, to do, say, etc., before the show ends, now is a good time to do it. Um, let's have a little look, see what, uh, see what it says in here, uh, in the live chat. <laughs> um, sorry, being frank. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, Betty, also being frank. <laughs> uh, your dad builds awesome terrain. Oh, shucks. Um, yes, he does. Um, I'm not just saying that because he's my dad. He does make some awesome stuff. And him and a whole load of other businesses all have links just down there in the description. So if you want some epically made custom built terrain, buildings, landscapes, whatever it is you want, uh, get in contact with Jeff over at Purple Line Creations. There's a Facebook link down there and also a website link. Go and have a little look if you want to. And I'm sure also Leslie and some of the guys in the live chat can actually give you testimonials right? because they've seen and bought some of this stuff before. So go and have a little look. Uh, Jeff also works very closely with Colin Farrant at Charlie Foxtrot model, Models, models? Um, and he makes some really good 20mm and 28mm laser cut terrain for historical things. Um, beautiful models, really well created. Um, and it, like they kind of work together to kind of create, like I think um, my dad Jeff gets a lot of stuff, uh, like templates and stuff made from Charlie Foxtrot. Um, and then he does like sculpts over the top. Very, very cool. Um, what else he's saying in there? Just had a thought. Your river sections could be a lava river if you're doing them for a 40k, 40K table. Go on, do lava. Um, yeah, you're absolutely right. That's a great idea. That's a hot idea, says Staff. That is a really cool idea. And I have played with lava in the past. Not real lava. That's a stupid thing to do. Although I wish I would. Um, yes. I, I'm interested to do something like that, or even like acid rivers. Oh, okay, the the uh, yeah, the possibilities are endless here. Uh, Mike is leaving us for the evening. Thanks, Mike, for coming along. It's been absolutely great having you. Uh, please do come along again because I like it when people do. Um, thanks, thanks ever so much, and I hope you have a lovely week. Take care. Uh, the conversation doesn't stop here, of course. It can continue on Facebook and and on Discord. See you soon. Take care, mate. Um, Leslie says, bubbling snot, because, you know, Nurgle. Yeah, ab absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's a good idea. I like that. They're all good ideas. Just different types of rivers and things, right? Yeah. I'll buy some more in the future, and I can do, like, a whole different set of them. Of water on that paint, that's a bit on the thick side. Doesn't want to leave the brush. There we go. Always pays to check over everything five or six times. Okay, let that dry for a minute and then I'm going to go back in there and sort that out with some crimson. Okay, so yes, I am, I'm going to do an eye with um, magic blue because I think I want to do it different than the electric blue because that's what I've been using all evening on the guns. That is not a mixed paint. That is, <laughs> that is a very unmixed paint. So I'm going to have to give that a shake. There we go. That's better. Cool, and I am gonna use water on that one, I think. Oh, I've got paint all over me, look at that. Let's use water to really thin that down, rather than medium. Because I wanna make it quite runny. Um, to create a soft glaze. Ok, 
kind of want it to go over the surface of the eye, but I also want it to run around the outsides in there a little. didn't put enough paint down so I'm just trying to dab it in there to just try and tease it out the bristles of my brush this might have actually been the color I used on the tentacles the last time oh well it seems to be working better with the um, the white underneath it There we go, that's better. Cool. Right, well, I, it's one of those things now where I'm going to do little bits and pieces over it for like probably the next half an hour. Um, so I'm going to move away from here because I'm done, I think. <laughs> Stafford says, I'm stopping two before blood is spilt. Too much Baileys. I don't think there's such a thing. You carry on drinking, mate. Don't have a problem, obviously. Um, anyway, yeah, it's been a good night uh, working on here. I'm really looking forward to Frank being finished and Betty, but she's got a long way to go, frankly. Frankly. <laughs> oh, the fun's not going to stop with that one, is it? Um, yeah, and, and over the weekend, I'm not going to be doing so much tomorrow, but on Sunday, I'm going to be spending quite a lot of time here in the studio um, and just kind of trying to catch up with them all and, and bring all my tyranny together um, I'm gonna try and do some really nice bases on these guys as well um, so I'm gonna spend a bit of time putting some sculpting putting things on there excuse me and just try and make a nice bit of terrain because a lot of my tuners so far I've got very very flat bases um, because I've tried to rush them I think but they still look neat um, just very very flat and landscapes are not flat unless they're artificial excuse me and I didn't want them to be artificial um, it's a short story there so um, yes that's what I'm going to be doing over the weekend is finishing Frank and as soon as I've done it I will put pictures of him on media I'll put them on um, in my little Tyranid families folder on Discord I will put them on Facebook and I will put them on Instagram as well um, before we go because uh, every week I'm just going to plug it a little bit because a lot of people are asking me a lot about it um, a lot of people are asking me a lot about it yeah whatever uh, Salute 50 is an event that is occurring in London on April the 22nd uh, which is a Saturday normally a uh, Salute games show um, which is the largest uh, in Europe um, occurs over two days but this year it's only one day so tickets are selling out they are £12 if you want to go and I will be going with a good group from the Easy Eat community um, a few of us are going to be travelling up by train we're going to be spending the night on the Friday before in London um, in accommodation we're going to go and have a few drinks say hi catch up chat nerd stuff and then the following morning we're going to then go over to Salute um, where we're going to meet Jeff my dad from Purple Line Creations who's going to be going up there with Charlie <laughs> Charlie Foxtrot, Colin from Charlie Foxtrot um, because uh, it's going to be a great day out, it's huge there's so much to see and do up there and if you are looking for a fun weekend out with the Easy 8 community I would love to see you there um, if you want to talk um uh, travel and accommodation uh, it's not something that I can provide for you but I can help you find that because I've been searching for it for the group of us that, have been, uh, that are going to go together because um, we've been talking about it for a while now um, I'm more than happy to help you sort that out if you want to it would be great to have a really big contingent of the Easy 8 community um, coming along to it so yeah it's going to be a great day out get those tickets um, they are still available because Dave bought his just the other day they are still available the prices are always going to remain at £12 as far as I'm aware uh, but I would get them now to avoid disappointment later if you're considering going and it's 12 pounds man everyone can afford that right right um and it's gonna be a good day so yeah that's salute 50 uh, salute 50 because it is the 50th anniversary of salute yay um or at least the 50th show 50 years seems like a long time running maybe it is who knows it's gonna be a good day it's gonna be a good day um and that's april the 22nd 
in the meantime, um, I'm just going to carry on painting for the night, sort of the next 15, 20 minutes, because uh, I'm feeling a bit rough, frankly. I'm a little bit tired and <coughs> first cough of the evening, but my throat is really sore and my teeth hurt, man. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be on for a, for a few minutes. If you fancy coming and join me over on Discord at the Easy Eight Easy Eight After Party, um, but until then, um, Leslie's going. Cheers, Leslie. Thanks, mate. Uh, until then, I will see you next week. Uh, so keep keep on painting, stay safe, be kind, and I'll see you soon. Cheers now. Bye bye. I messed up my sign-off, didn't I? I said the painting bit first. Ruined!